I like tea. And speaking of tea, we, we need to have a talk, friends. Romans, countrymen. If you're new here, hello, I'm Emma. Welcome to Musical Theater Mondays. It's a little ditty little thingamajig where I talk about musical theater every Monday. <laughs> so welcome. I'm slowly getting some energy from this tea and it's great. So here's the thing. As some of you may remember, I had this whole idea set up for Black History Month to celebrate various artists and shows, to celebrate black history. And you know, life happened and unfortunately I didn't do it, but I am slowly bringing these things back into the mix because black history is American history. And just because it's not February more doesn't mean that we should not be celebrating people of color. My original plan was this, I was gonna focus on a show a actor, which will be coming soon. We just talked about Aida Overton Walker, and I also wanted to focus on a director. And of course, the immediate person that I think of is George C. Wolfe. George C. Wolfe, I think, is just one of the most brilliant, inspiring, thought provoking artists not just a director, but as an artist. So George C. Wolfe is basically a director, writer, producer, sometimes actor. In terms of his schooling, he went to Panoma College where he got a BA in theater. And then he went to NYU where he got his master's in dramatic writing and musical theater. So basically what he really wanted to do was to write and direct. But a lot of people were saying, well, you can't do both. So you should be a writer. And so he did that. And then they said, oh, you're actually really good at directing. You should be a director. And so he did that. And then surprise, surprise, people were like, oh, you can be both. And what's interesting is that the majority of his projects, not only did he produce, but he also wrote them as well. I do want to make note that for this video, I'm mainly focusing on his musical theater portfolio. He has done a lot of plays, directed a lot of films. He just recently did uh, Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. So he's done a lot of stuff, but for now, we're just going to be focusing on the musical theater realm of his creations. His first big success was Jelly's Last Jam, which is about the life and times of Jelly Roll Morton. Then he helped conceive and write the lyrics for the next show that he directed, which was Bring Into Noise, Bring Into Funk. I think that was the project that Savion Glover became known, I think. I don't know, don't quote me on that. He then directed a revival of the production on the town. He was the book writer and director for The Wild Party, not the off-Broadway Andrew Lippa version, the John LaCusa one. We can go through all that in a different video. He also directed Elaine Stritch at Liberty, which was um, Elaine Stritch's one woman show. He was the director and producer for Caroline or Change. I originally thought that he was the book writer for that, but Tony Kushner is the book writer for that. Which actually, if you didn't know, George C. Wolfe directed the productions of Angels in America, both parts one and two in case you don't know that. The most recent musical that he directed was Shuffle Along. Wait, I need my computer in front of me to say the whole title of this. Shuffle Along or the making of the musical sensation of 1921 and all that followed. From what I read and from interviews I saw of that, he conceived that show himself, wrote the book. So to suffice to say, he has done a lot of shows. In my opinion, I feel like George C. Wolfe is the epitome of an artist who wanted to create their own work and show it to the world. I think he's one of the best directors in musical theater history. And it's also nice to see that he's being recognized for his work in TV and film as well. So here's the thing, all of that aside, back to when I was creating this Black History Month project, I wanted to see what other directors were out there that could also be featured. And basically in a nutshell, from what I found in my research is that when it comes to Broadway musical theater directors, George C. Wolfe, I believe is the only black director who has consistently worked on Broadway in musical theater, to which I think that is ridiculous. If you guys didn't know, the theater community has definitely been going through some changes, hopefully some permanent changes, about basically how theater in a nutshell is very, very white. And with everything that has been going on in the world, people are finally calling out theaters and verbally expressing that there needs to be a change and there needs to be more diversity and more inclusivity. I recently read an article of a cast member who very bravely spoke out about his experience and the things that he spoke about are extremely incredibly important. The thing that stuck out to me the most is something that I could relate in terms of people's health in general is that you have to work from the inside out. As you know, Hamilton is known and applaud for being diverse in their casting and all that jazz. But behind the scenes, 
part of my French, but it's white as fuck. Also, it's a lot of straight white men. And that's kind of mind blowing to think, especially based on what Hamilton is representing. If the creative and the production team is not as diverse as the cast, then we have a problem. I went on Playbill.com to see what the current Broadway season is like. And again, mainly focusing on what musicals are being done for this season. All are directed by white people. Some are directed by women, but at the same time, this really shows a lack in diversity in leadership. There are quite a few musicals on Broadway that are telling stories of people of color. And yet the vision is being led by a white person. In my opinion, I think that's just wrong. That's just my two cents. I think we're just so used to being in the formula that white people would be leading these visions of showing stories about minorities in the past. Rodgers and Hammerstein is a great example of that, but it's 2021 now. Y'all, give those opportunities to people of color, you know? Just saying. And this shouldn't be just for musicals about stories of people of color. All BIPOC directors should have the same opportunity as white directors when it comes to being considered for any sort of production. Just as a reminder, this is only focusing on musicals on Broadway right now. There are regional theaters out in the country that have taken the steps to make their team more diverse and inclusive or their team is already diverse and inclusive. But in terms of the Broadway community, there needs to be some changes. I guess what I'm trying to say in a nutshell is that if we want to have an inclusive, a diverse collective of artists in the theater industry, especially for musical theater, it has to start from the inside out. It has to, especially at this point where we should be offering more opportunities for people of color. Directing should be one of those things. George C. Wolf shouldn't be the only person there. This past week, I've been finding it very eye-opening and very educational in terms of how much work really needs to be done in the theater industry. There are many of the things I would love to talk about that are linked to this. If there is anything that's popped up on here that you're interested in hearing more about, please let me know down in the comments. Thank you for checking this out. I hope this gave you some sort of insight on where the Broadway theater world is at the moment. I am hopeful that with these discussions that's been going on in the past year, I think we are going to see some changes, hopefully sooner than later. We shall see. Thank you so much for checking this out. If you're new here, please check out my other videos. We talk about everything under the sun. If there's anything you'd like me to discuss about within the musical theater realm, let me know in the comments. May you be happy, healthy, safe, and at ease. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.